Greetings everyone. This uh, short video lecture is going to review the details of the Twitter assignment for SW701 Social Policy. Hopefully this is an assignment that folks will find a little bit fun, a little bit different, and it'll give you an opportunity to learn a whole set of skills that I think are important in contemporary practice. So the Twitter assignment, which focuses on microblogging through Twitter, um, focused on social policy, is worth 20% of your final grade, and it's an individual assignment. It is made up of 10 Twitter posts or tweets and a reflective assignment that you'll pass in on the last day of class. The 10 posts, which relate to the course content, should be done over the life of the course. So the course is um, essentially 12 weeks in duration. So sometime over that 12 weeks, uh, you should be posting 10 times uh, and then writing a reflective paper about your experience and handing that in on the last day of class. And you'll submit that via A2L. And so when I say that the, over the duration of the class, if you post all your postings in the first, let's say, four weeks, or in the last four weeks, I'll definitely reflect that in the grading. So the expectation is that you're engaging on an ongoing basis uh, with the, uh, the tweeting process and that the tweets are generally speaking distributed across that time, you know, with some flexibility. All right, so um, let's see. So uh, Twitter is, uh, an, is a platform, a social media platform that many of you are familiar with and many of you may use. Although in my experience, a lot of students don't use it. Um, but it is certainly that's something that's part of our popular culture at the present time. And its popularity and significance it tends to ebb and flow. I thought maybe it was going to um, cease to be a very useful platform a few years ago, and then it seemed to get a bit of a resurgence. So its uh, assignments in Twitter are used in a variety of professional programs, and they support a specific set of learning outcomes that are closely related to the social policy course outcomes as well. So um, that includes promoting digital literacy, accessing new ideas, promoting social inquiry or being curious about what's happening in the social world around you, expanding understandings of what constitutes policy communication, staying abreast of emerging and advancing trends in social policy. It also may help to combat some of the isolation that people feel. A lot of us are working at home. We're not as connected to colleagues as we might have been. Some of you might be on an educational leave from your workplace. You might have moved to be here. So you may be experiencing some isolation and you may find like-minded people or people who you like to debate with on Twitter and that might uh, reduce your sense of isolation. And hopefully it will enhance your social connections, um, particularly again in the context of the global pandemic. Oh, my screen just went blank. Okay, there it is. So as I said, you're required to complete 10 Twitter posts relating to course content and learning outcomes. And you can define those broadly as you understand them. Uh, students are also expected to participate in the Twitter environment and to engage with your peers and other Twitter participants more generally. And so uh, that would be specifically in the context of social policy knowledge and social policy understandings. And the expectation is that you're going to reflect the critical social work perspectives that the school values in your engagement. You're asked to use a specific hashtag, which is hashtag MACSW701 2020. So MAC Social Work 701, that's the course number, 2020, that's the year, to organize all your posts. And so I can't mark the posts if I can't find them, and the hashtag is the key to me being able to find your work. You're also use, asked to use another hashtag, and you can decide what that hashtag is. Uh, that in some way relates to the topic or issue that you're focusing on and this will expand access to your post beyond just the members of our class. And I'm asking you to explore the Twitter environment to discover and select hashtags that best reflect the topic of the discussion that you're participating in. So, you know, sometimes I participate in social work, hashtag uh, SW Tech, for example, or uh, in other classes, we've used hashtag more like people uh, to reflect a particular textbook that we use in the leadership program. 
Okay. So if you uh, are, are looking at the screen now, you'll see that there's a rubric that I'll be using for this assignment. It's a pretty straightforward rubric. I'm going to evaluate each post uh, from a score of one through three. So obviously if you get zero, you didn't complete it. And one is that it meets the minimum expectations. Two is that it's good and three is that it's excellent. Okay. Um, and then again, you're going to complete the two to three page reflection. So that's just maximum of about a thousand words. It's due on A2L on the last day of class and it will be marked out of five. Um, and so for the reflection, when you're writing up the reflection paper, it is meant to be a personal reflection. So you don't have to use sources or references, although every once in a while someone finds something that they wanna share, some little gem, and so that's fine, you can. Um, you are going to reflect on the assignment goals in your reflection and you're going to draw on your experience of using uh, Twitter. So of course, ha perfectly acceptable to use I statements in this kind of a paper. Um, the goal of the assignment is as follows, to promote digital literacy, to access new ideas, to promote social inquiry, to expand understandings of policy communication, to stay abreast of emerging and advancing trends in social policy, to combat isolation and to enhance social connection in the context, context of the global pandemic. So in your reflection, you should tell me a bit about how these uh, learning outcomes came to be for you, how you made those happen through your uh, engagement with Twitter. And if it didn't happen, then you should probably reflect on what didn't happen and why it didn't happen and what I might need to know about this assignment going forward. So getting started in the assignment, many of you, as I said, might use Twitter, but my experience is a lot of people don't. So the first thing that you're going to have to do is set up an, a Twitter account. It's very simple. It's like registering for points or setting up an email account or ordering something from Amazon. There's a few questions that you have to answer and then you'll be provided with a Twitter account. And um, uh, you'll have to pick a name for yourself or an identifier in order to activate your account. So you can use your own name or you can use a pseudonym. So I use Lonely Social Worker. I've had students use Serious Social Worker, um, uh, Critical Thinker, all kinds of different pseudonyms that you might like to use instead of your, um, your name. You don't have to use your full name if you wanted to say uh, use Tara SW or Tara Policy person, you could do that as well. Um, and sometimes students say, oh, I couldn't possibly do this Twitter assignment because I have a regulation or a stipulation at work that says that I can't use social medium, media. But in fact, um, what I would suggest that you do if you're concerned about getting in trouble for using Twitter is that you speak with your supervisor and or your HR department at the office. Uh, where you work and with your employer and you explain to them that you have been asked to do this as part of your master's degree and the purpose of the engagement with Twitter is uh, to understand it from a critical perspective and to understand how uh, social policy conversations operate within the Twitter, Twitter environment. And so um, in my experience, uh, most employers are not the least bit concerned about the use of Twitter in this way. They're more concerned about the potential that employees may engage in uh, critique of the organization or uh, ranting about something that's happened at work. Um, but what I would also say is if you do have that kind of a policy at work, then you do need to have a conversation with your employer because a pseudonym that you might use online is no guarantee of anonymity. There are ways for folks to figure out who you are. And in fact, I've had a number of people be quite upset that somebody that they know has figured out who they are on Twitter and tried to connect with them. So you'll be surprised how there are sneaky ways that things come together uh, in the virtual uh, digital world. So if you are um, operating in an employment context or in another kind of professional context where there is a prohibition against the use of social media, do have a conversation, still feel free to use a pseudonym, don't hesitate to use a pseudonym even if you don't have that kind of a policy. Um, it can be kind of fun to have an alter ego. 
But I also always remind people that Twitter is a public forum. The data that is generated through Twitter is sold and used in all kinds of ways. Um, and so you should think uh, carefully about how you engage. And remember that what you are engaging in is a kind of public professional communication. So you might want to think about things like the code of ethics and the guideline for ethical practice and how these would shape and uh, instruct your participation in the online Twitter sphere. Uh, so sometimes students feel confused about this idea of talking about the meaning of social policy and how do I create a tweet that reflects the course content. Well, you know, the, the tweets do need to relate to the content of the course. But when I say that, I mean it more generally overall. It doesn't have to be a match for the topic of the week. So you might be more concerned with liberalism than you are, say, with uh, seniors' health care policy. You might be more concerned with um, the way COVID-19 policies are developed than you are with which population they are concerned with. So both of those things would be acceptable ways of engaging. But it needs to relate to some kind of critical understanding of social policy, and you need to be able to link it back to the course if you were asked questions about why you did what you did. Um, you're open to interpret the uh, learning goals and objectives of the course and to broaden and narrow them uh, as they relate to the topics you cover. I'd also suggest bear in mind those things that I mentioned earlier, uh, like digital literacy, skill development, and professional communications, as also tied into those objectives and goals. Sometimes you might create an original tweet. Maybe you share a photo that you've taken, you caption the photo. But you might also find some other material online, something you're reading on a website, something else you see on Twitter, and certainly you can build on those um, pieces of media uh, and mold them into a new story or information by adding a caption or other information to them through the tweet. So if you share or retweet material, you need to include a comment or commentary so we understand, so I understand when I'm marking, why you're sharing this information and why you've chosen to reuse it. Just retweeting without any information about why won't count as a contribution. So sometimes I fire stuff off with no commentary because I think it's interesting and because I want it to stay at the top of the Twitter feed. Um, but if I were marking myself, I wouldn't count, count that as a contribution. So here uh, you can see on the screen uh, that there are two examples of folks who are posting about uh, social policy. And they are both uh, tweeting about housing issues. And so these are some great examples. They're both prolific tweeters. Uh, Greg Tredesco will be attending in class later on in the term. Um, and so you'll have a chance to talk to him about Hamilton housing policy, but you can see that he certainly presents a policy perspective and he would get good marks if he were in the course for the tweets that he's choosing to share. So um, I would encourage folks to engage with Twitter and to comment on your peers' feedback, uh, on your peers' tweets and some other tweets that you may see online. Um, you might have a few things to say about a single tweet. You might post multiple things. But as I said before, the expectation for the course is that you're contributing across the length of the course. That you contribute, if you contribute 10 tweets on the same day, you won't have met the criteria for the assignment and it will affect your grade. I, I know sometimes people are very concerned with the marks aspect and I guess what I would say is, this is not a labor intensive kind of a, a, an engagement. I often scroll through Twitter if I have a few minutes while I'm waiting for the bus or I'm waiting for an elevator. And so uh, every once in a while I see something that I really think is interesting, I like it, I share it. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a, a long, uh, deep investment, really just to demonstrate that you're engaged and connected to the community. The other thing I would say is that there's a plethora a potpourri, a bushel, and a peck of advice about how to use Twitter and how to uh, be a successful Twitter participant. Uh, you can find a lot of different materials online. In particular, YouTube has a lot of great videos that show you how to do certain things. So if you're somebody who's finding the uh, Twitter assignment interesting and enjoyable, something different, 
then I would certainly encourage you to seek out these resources so that you can move from somebody who, you know, make, you can do Twitter to somebody who is really, you know, engaging in the art of uh, tweeting. Uh, and again, that would likely be reflected in how your marks would be assessed and understood. So I hope that this uh, informational lecture was helpful. Uh, if you have additional questions, there'll be lots of opportunities to ask questions as a group. I'd also encourage folks who might have additional questions to get in touch with me and we can have a, uh, an individual conversation on Zoom or by telephone if you have specific questions in mind. So I'll look forward to connecting with you uh, on our next Zoom meeting. Bye for now.